My guest today is on a crusade. After three months as a Yazidi slave of the Islamic State group in Iraq, she managed to escape and flee to Germany. And now that she has survived this ordeal, she wants the world, she wants you to take notice and take action. The jihadists have been on a systematic campaign to abduct, enslave or kill Yazidis in Iraq. Men are murdered, women and girls are kept as sex slaves. Nadia Murad is with us today. Thank you very much for being with us and for fielding our questions at France 24. Um, first, I'd like you to take us back uh, to that day in 2014 when the jihadists came to your village in Iraq. Uh, they abducted you, they killed your mother and six brothers. Can you tell us what happened that day? I was taken uh, with 150 women, girls between 9 to 25, between 26 years they took us all to Mosul. Uh, I was with hundreds of girls who were taken to Mosul, thousands of, of girls who were still in Mosul and Tel Afar, and in Syria, and all the places where Daesh was, the Yazidi women and girls who were in these areas, and there, uh, before taking us, the first day, I didn't know what they are going to tell us, and on the way there, they were, uh, they were harassing us when they were mobilizing us by the buses, when they killed my brothers and my sisters, uh, my brothers and my mother at the same day, and in Mosul, they told us, you are the sabayas, you are the slaves, and uh, you are here according to our sharia and according to our law, that you are here for the rape, you are here to be sold. And when they told us this, uh, and it's true, uh, that after just a short time and then just the next day they mobilized us to a different place and they distributed us among them. They were coming and they were buying us, they were selling us and they were exchanging us everywhere in, in every center that Daesh existed. Did you at any point try to talk to them, try to reason with them in any way? Uh, the first one who took me, I spoke to him and I told him about this and he wouldn't answer me. He was one of their leaders, their military leaders, and all of them were bad, but, but he was just really bad and, and he wouldn't answer me. He was just telling me, you are infidels and this should happen to you. Uh, a guard from that uh, center, he, I told him what, why you are doing this to us, why you are killing the people. They said, this is what we do. This is our Sharia. We are applying the our Sharias. We are doing this because you are Yazidis, because we are infidels and you must become the sabayas. So what they were doing, they were doing in the name of religion. Yes, they were committing crimes, killing, enslavement, uh, uh, displacing people by force, uh, everything they've done. Yes, when they were raping us, yes, they were, when they were taking us, yes, they were doing that in the name of religion, yes, they were doing in the name of Islam, and they were declaring this, this they were not hiding this. At that point, did you think you would come out of this alive? Uh, uh, when I was taken, when I was taken captive, when this happened to my people, after we didn't receive any help, uh, after taking me, I didn't uh, think that uh, that I will ever be able to be freed. I never thought about my freedom. Uh, everywhere I was, uh, ISIL, and everywhere girl were was full with Daesh members, and they all had the same treatment to us. I never uh, believed that I would be able to be freed, and all the girls. But after thinking about that, we never thought about about our freedom. Uh, we didn't think about our own freedom. Uh, we were just hoping that, that uh, somebody will keep us and they will not exchange us every hour. This is what we were thinking about. At the time, the Islamic State group abducted around 6,000, that's the estimate, 6,000 Yazidi women and girls. And it's believed that more than 3,000 of them are still being held captive. Uh, and during your captivity, you spent time, as you told us, you saw countless others, hundreds of other uh, Yazidi women and girls. Uh, tell us about your daily life during the few months that you spent in captivity. It was three months total. Until now, 3,400 is still under captivity. And, and what, uh, what the world have, uh, have said and what I am saying and what others have said, this is still committed against them in Iraq and Syria. And, and my life with Daesh, uh, I didn't have life. Others didn't have life with Daesh. We didn't have life uh, days, uh, weeks or months. It's what, our life was just moments. We didn't know in what moment they will come and they will uh, give us away to somebody else from Sudan from other countries. We didn't know 
who will be coming and who will be taking us because everybody who was taking us, they were not taking us uh, to buy us, to keep us uh, or to sell us. They were taking us basically to rape us. And then uh, in, in addition to the rape, they were uh, an insult. They were then selling us to others. And then they were bringing another girls. They raping him. This wasn't me. Anyone who raped me, it was not just me. He was raping other girls as well before me. And then you managed to escape. Can you tell us about that? How how were you able to escape from uh, the the places where you were being kept? The first time when I, the first one in his center, when I, where he had guards, he had a driver, and somebody was teaching me the uh, the religion there, and he also had people coming to him there. I couldn't uh, sleep, uh, I couldn't escape. And then one time I, uh, I, 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 I thought I, I will never be able to escape, but because I couldn't bear that anymore in the beginning, then after raping me, then I escaped, and then they captured me, and they take me back, and they punished me a big punishment. And the punishment was for any girl who, who attempted to escape and the punishment to, to take back to the center for how many uh, Dash member was there. They were there to rape her. This happened to me and also happened to others. This happened to the girls who were held in Syria. Many cases like this happened where girls uh, committed suicide after this happened to them. And after this, I couldn't, uh, I didn't attempt to escape again because, because that night, because six guards uh, that night they punished me because I thought that if, if I attempt to escape, the next time more than 10 will be doing this to me. Uh, and because it was making difference how many guards will be there to rape. Uh, and because of that, I didn't attempt to escape. But then after they took me from Hamdania to Mosul, just one ISIL member inside Mosul, he, I was with him. And then I escaped from him and I got inside one house in Mosul. I never believed that there will be a man in Mosul who would have mercy, who would, who would, who, because many girls inside Mosul have attempted to escape because they, they, they will return them to Daesh. But the family that I came across, they were not part of Daesh members. They had to live there. And I told them my story and I asked them to help me and they helped me and then they took me they took me to the border all right so you were able in the end to receive help and uh, and escape your captivity in that way I can see when you're talking I can see that it's very difficult for you to tell us your story and I can see that you're forcing yourself uh, to tell us as you have told the United Nations Security Council as you have told British lawmakers uh, French lawmakers you've you've traveled to several countries to tell them what happened to you why are you doing this what are you hoping to achieve <laughs> Uh, what is difficult for me uh, when I say this uh, in other places, uh, this is not because it, it's very difficult for me to say it. But after all this happened to me and after tens of people have seen me naked in the centers, and this is not worse than that. This is it's not worse than that to say what has happened to, the, to me. It's difficult uh, to tell because the world has seen what happened. I, I, I think that everybody knew what Daesh have done to the girls and to the women and the name of Daesh have been in Syria and Iraq. And it's difficult for me that the world, the entire world is, is silent, is doing nothing. What I am, what I want and the goal of my message here uh, to the world is that to come together, to stand up for more than a year and help these girls and women are suffering. Millions of people in Syria and Iraq are hungry, are, they don't have clothes to dress, uh, they don't have food to eat. For a year and a half, you all know what has happened. You all know what has happened. Everybody has heard the testimony of the girls who escaped from the ISIL. If you haven't heard that, you have seen that on the TV, you have seen it on the social media. And you, you, you all seen on the internet what Daesh is doing to the people. And uh, you think how Daesh is destroying. If you haven't seen that, you've seen in Paris what has happened. Uh, before, in, in Paris, uh, people, because they are just human beings, because they just live in peace and with freedom, and they came, uh, you saw them here, if you haven't seen them there, we all need to stand together. It's not just my people. This didn't happen only to my people. Millions of people have become victims of Daesh without having, with being innocent. What I want today is that we all together stand up, is to work together. The God have, has given the, the, the thoughts for us to the, to the parliament 
governments, to the governments, to the law, to the justice uh, that the God have given us the intelligence uh, to think and they and they've given us the power to act to the injustice. All of us been in places. People have listened. People have written what I've told to them. But then when I leave, I they things get forgotten everywhere that I go. That every place I, I want the people. Uh, I, I don't need people just to take my to to write down what happened to me and take a photo of me. I just. This is not my message. I don't want that. I want something. This is this is making me very tired. I want justice. I want justice to be established. These criminals must be brought to justice. We need to understand why this all has happened to us. Why millions of people have been displaced from their homes. Why they have lost everything. Why they are hungry, displaced. The God has given us the power. When this happened to Iraq in Syria, when this happened in France, when this happened in Libya, all the big countries must. Daesh is all it's merely a terrorist organization. It's a terrorist, a radical organization. When the humanity stand against it, the injustice that happened to me, uh, and, and, and even without a weapons, you can stop it. But this must, this wouldn't be stopped for a year and a half. This has continued. We cannot bear this anymore. For 16th, 16th of December, I spoke this at the Security Council. Uh, I said this so I can see some answer from the world. So I can see some help from the world, not just for my people. So this will not be repeated for any other people. So so this will never be repeated for any other people. And then after that, I went to the Arabic wars. I went to the European wars. And then I came here. I will deliver this message everywhere. And I will, I will say whatever I saw. And I will testify against it. Yes, I am still waiting. I will not wait for years to happen. I will wait for moments. I will wait for days so something can be done. Nadia Murad, thank you very much. Uh, you survived a three-month ordeal as a captive in the hands of the Islamic State group in Iraq and Syria. Nadia Murad is demanding that the world pay attention. Uh, as a reminder, the U.S. Uh, Human Rights Office in Iraq says that the Islamic State group is seeking to destroy Yazidi people. More than 3,000 women and girls are still being held captive there. Thank you very much uh, for watching France 24 and for uh, watching the interview.